It's another Monday, so you know what that means. College Cod is back, and we're here on the Bravo stream. Myself, Seymour, alongside Mick. We're going to bring you all the action for tonight because it is jammed, packed with some heated matchups. It's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to do, uh, do this for the night. Mick, how are you feeling? Hey, I'm feeling great, man. I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm ready for the night and to see what we got going on here. Oh, it's going to be fantastic so I, I do know that the first matchup is going to be the university of iowa versus northwest missouri state university which is exciting because we've seen missouri state university the bearcats go up already i think last week I'm, I'm not too sure of how they how they did last week i didn't i wasn't able to catch the match but i do know that they're probably going to be nice and warmed up for the stream this week do we I think we i think we might have lost is it lost mix so yeah we're gonna... <laughs> i think it's just on a video behalf not in terms of audio I'll, I'll, oh, okay I'm here. We're, we're getting taken care of all right so so yeah do, do you know a little bit more about the the matchups um yeah i i talking on both uh iowa and northwest missouri state here you know we're looking really good on iowa's bahar you know they're going one and one right now they had a really good matchup against Ottawa Black on uh, week one, which I know these guys are doing really well. So for them to sit there and run, you know, the stats they did against these guys, running two and six in search, you know, getting shut out and uh, control there, but doing overall pretty well in hard point. Besides that, you know, they've done great so far. And in terms of, you know, Northwestern, you know, they've, they, they've given it the best, you know, as much as they can so far. I think they're going to have a really good shot coming in tonight. You know, really fair matchup in my eyes. Um, but speaking on Iowa, you know, these guys, they're one and one right now doing fairly well in terms of, you know, their placements and how they're facing up against everybody, you know, across the board, really good stats going with these guys, you know, uh, not exactly dominating every single person they've run up against, but definitely being a contender and showing that they have something to show in the long term of the season. Well, it is the start of the season after all, so we are getting to know these teams a little bit better, especially in this season, having so many new teams. I mean, 180 of them. I think I think plus, but you were talking about the Bearcats and how they were good last week with the hard point, which I'm excited for because I think the hard points are going to be really important here seeing Checkmate and Garrison on the board. I mean, you look at a map like Ch Checkmate, it's going to be very AR heavy in, in the sense of the outer outside areas of the plane. You're going to see a lot of lane dominance from the power angles of the assault rifles. When you compare it to Garrison, where you're going to see a lot of sneaky paths from the from the, the submachine guns to try to break into the points, because there's a lot of time that you can get off a ton of these points for Garrison. So yeah. I do want to see the difference when it comes down to that. And if you're talking about Bearcats, you know, how, they're, how they had a good showing on Hardpoint, I might be excited. So... Pretty sure we can I can look at the schedule here for for the matches today. And if you do look at the bottom, it is going to be on Alpha right now. CUW Esports versus UNI Purple, and that is going to be Mr. McCorn Meal and I hold shift over there. So if you want to go see that that matchup, I know they're going to be giving a phenomenal match on the on the Alpha, which I'm excited for because I mean everything on College Cod is is just fantastic. Yep. And I mean, now they, we we always try to bring our best, so I'm sure that they're bringing the best on the alpha. Yeah, you know those guys over there on alpha. You know they're they're alpha. This they they exactly. try and hold the name as best as they can. So you know they're always going to sit there and try and step it up. Which you know all around the board, you know with uh, alpha and Bravo, the production side on you know when it comes to CCL, these guys are doing a great job. And props to them for what they've gotten going so far. And looking forward to how we can you know make things better possibly going forward. But you know, super excited for how everything's turning out and what we can accomplish and what we have to look at tonight. Definitely, 100%. And speaking of these ma maps, I, I talked about Raid, which is going to be our first one for tonight. You know, the matchup between Iowa and, and uh, NWMSU is going to be very important right off the bat because this is going to see what, like, what my expectations from a map like Checkmate is going to kind of move over into a search and destroy because I know Checkmate... Yeah. It's more of a, a pacing of a of a map rather than just like kind of guns blazing. You're going in. I'm gonna. I want to see a lot of control yeah. on checkmate rather than like pure gunfights, one on one. It's just pound for pound shots. So, so I'm looking hard for rotations here, looking for it to set up on what I was talking about before. Power angles for the assault rifles, and and if you're running that that maybe double AR double SMG uh, split that you, that's just kind of like critical to a to a team yeah oh, i also want to see a lot of uh plane dominance a lot of control for the plane from those submachine guns to allow those ars to kind of freely move throughout the map and set up on those yep. power angles 
And, and you know, speaking on what you said about uh, raid, you know, talking about these things and like with check uh, checkmate, you know, it is a lot slower map compared to uh, raid. You know, these guys, I feel like when it comes down to raid, because they're so like common and so familiar with the map that is raid. You know, we all play Black Ops too. We all know and love it. I feel like these guys are so aggressive on it to know, you know, we can just play the game. We can feel right at home. You know, let's just throw it back to the old days, have a good match with the boys. But with Checkmate being such a newer map, I feel like, you know, the guys, they're still getting familiar with it. They're harboring down on their skills and what they're capable of. And it, it does cause the game to slow down a little bit, but it also allows us a lot more to talk about, a lot more film for these players to go over and figure out what they can do better going forward to where Checkmate just feels almost as flowing as any other map. Yeah, and like you're, you're saying that like everybody's used to Raid. Of course they are. I mean, it's a fan favorite. So so looking at that, I do want to see a lot of team cohesion go for maybe four, maybe three one splits or all uh, four player hits to the points. But I mean, we are going to be hopping into that checkmate match first. So I, I want to hear from you from you first, Mick, for this first on matchup. Expecting here, who, what's the what's the score count? What's your predictions? Um, I'm thinking honestly, Iowa in terms of hard point, you know, everybody that they've came up against, um, you know, Missouri State, the Bearcats have given everybody a run for their money in terms of College COD gauntlet presumed for this Monday. I mean, I am so excited to see what these...
You see Crayons rotating on over. He's gonna have an important fight here. Hoyle is trying to try to take him off the boxes, and so he does with the XM4. Big pick from the uh, the Bearcats to try to take this away from Hawkeyes and find that point four, point five. Yeah, especially looking at how we see that it was Crayons who specifically picked out. You know, they sat there and sent that guy into the front to sit there and grab the point. As we see, he has a minute and 13 behind his belt right now. And he's also going 20 and 21, meaning he has a solid sat line behind him. He's holding these objectives. He's winning those gunfights. And he's giving the team the points that they need right now. And, you know, once they shut him out, it almost feels like at that point, Bearcats, they can feel pretty comfy to sit there and try moving on the point by then. And, but they had to play it a little cautious because the rest of these Hawkeyes teams, they're also very, they're very accomplished as well. Now it's slowed down. This point five is just, it seems very slow at times. Bob's yep. doing a good job at holding down with Toxic, watching over with this XM4. Knows this race in the corner, so just going to bide his time, wait it on out. And as the rotations go back to the third reset of this map, Bearcats, they have to hold on to here. I mean, Hawkeyes, they're only 30 points away from taking map number one. Bearcats, they need this. Yeah, Bearcats, I think, you know, with how they were pushing on that site, once they hit about 15 seconds with how the position that the Hawkeyes are in right now, you do want to have one guy go in and contest and try and make sure they don't get an even further advance in terms of winning this round right here. But regardless of that you need to also sit there and make sure the rest of your team is trying to set up for this plane because so far they have not been winning these engagements and these standoffs and they need to make sure they go ahead and have that set up you know but iowa has already shut down that attempt and they already are holding these points getting them closer to that win that they need and crayons hit another five spree here he's 33 and 22 along with toxic who's 30 and 22. you have an ar who's showing up you have an smg who's showing up and toxic is not letting go of this you have it's still enough time to win for this first hard point. A stalemate on it. The slide comes through for Bearcats, but they're still not able to get crayons off of it. You have six seconds. It's totally winnable here. It is going to go to point number two now, as it is going to be a race for these spawns. But Hawkeyes, they're going to be the first ones there. They're going to only need two seconds. That's going to be the game. Oh. Checkmate goes to the Hawkeyes. 250 to 194. After an absolutely absurd match between the two of, the, two of them, as close as you can ask for for the opening of the CCL Bob Bravo stream for this Monday night. Yeah, and you know, as I said, you know, the guys who were going to sit there and make sure it was a long game. It wasn't going to be dominant by any point. They didn't leave the guys shut down at 150 or anything. They made sure they could try and break the 200 as possible. possible. You know, lost a couple engagements here and there, which wasn't in their favor. But overall, an impressive showing by them, showing that they're not exactly going to be count out at any point in time. They're going to fight for what they want. And we even saw that in the last couple points where they sat there and were kind of back and forth. You know, Bearcats was trying to hold down as best as possible. But unfortunately, Iowa just had the better rotations. They set up for those points quicker, made sure to get find those places, lock down the spawns, make sure guys couldn't rotate. And I think that was the determining factor when it came down to checkmate, especially with the whole map just being one large lane. That's a huge factor in determining who can win these respawn modes. Uh, and that's a, such a good point to make is the rotations there because I want to really highlight the the point three to, or the point four to point five that we did see in the the previous rotation prior prior to to the uh, to Iowa winning the game and you did see that Iowa was doing a great job at locking down point number four and making sure they had plane control so that they can have an easy rotation for crayons from point four to point five but yeah. that one on one going to the Bearcats was everything because it gave Bearcats that chance. That chance for them to take back point number five to get a huge time in the bank to take the lead on back, unfortunately for the Bearcats, is that when you're playing on checkmate, is that you have to really dig deep into yep. the back of the map to take those spawns away from Iowa. When they spawned up Garage, they were able to retake point number four, and it was like it was just a matter of time before the, the guns of Iowa between Crayons and Toxic, who were absolutely just beaming through the competition yep. of the Bearcats, it was only a matter of time before they took it back. They just overwhelmed them with the, the guns that we saw. It makes yep. me excited for the raid SMD that's coming up, Mick, because yep. if both of these teams are playing as practiced as I'm seeing, this should be a good search. Yeah, and, you know, that once again comes around to the rotations. You know, raid not being as much as a kind of single alley, there's a lot more places to kind of maneuver your team, to allocate your resources, find pickoff places for your ARs, find little Russian spots for your SMGs. It, it, lots of more kind of versatility in terms of a map. And I feel like with that, it, when it comes to raid, it allows the smarter teams to show up rather than just the better gunplay teams. 
And we saw Bearcats holding down these really good angles, but they just couldn't get a push. So as long as they know how to rotate and get in their spots and get those advantages right off the bat on defense and finding those picks on offense, I think we're going to see a really good showing from them here in Rake. Well, the one thing I, would, I do want to see is the team commitments that I was witnessing in the rotations for that hard point. I mean, a lot of times they weren't just going for solo hits onto the site. They were playing buddy systems. They were going mm -hmm. usually two and two to try to take the spawns and two to force the front of the point for, for a retake on, on a hard point. So if I'm, if I'm looking for the defense on a map like Raid, I mean, I would not be opposed to playing in the buddy system yep. that you do see. I mean, a lot of people go for that, that one player lurking on the B site and mm -hmm. most uh, most of the players over towards A, maybe you want to throw someone mid mid map just for the information. But no. a, a raid provides that versatility where you can go for three one splits, a mm -hmm. one one two split, or even a two two kind of buddy system. So oh, I I like to to see how these teams are playing in hard point because the rotations that from Iowa and the rotations from the Bearcats are are really showing that they like to play together. And we could very well see two two buddy systems in this yeah. raid S and D. Yeah, and speaking on that, you know, you usually do want to have those in search and destroys. You have your kind of, all right, well, you do usually have those defaults. And, you know, I feel like we're going to see that going in here in a little bit. We have, you know, those defaults and those buddy systems being utilized on such a large map. Well, you know, after seeing such a phenomenal game, number one, let's not waste any time and hop into Raid S and D because this is such a fan favorite map. I'm so glad we get to see it in Cold War as well. And it's just, it's, it's just been so fun to witness it, not just in the CDL, but the CCL, amateur COD tournaments all around. So it's going to be Iowa starting on attack for the first. Bearcats on defense. I want to see where they take this bomb. As you see, they're already kind of utilizing that buddy system down the middle, making sure a man can get those trades, you know, that mid in the kitchen. And right over there by Argali, that's going to be really popular. But issue is, they had a guy out there on the rotation with the bomb, and he was kind of all by himself for the most part, which really didn't give the Bearcats the best opportunity to sit there and get those trades. But overall, still winning the gunfight nonetheless. You already see three down for Hawkeyes. One only down for the Bearcats. Cushy's the last one alive, and that's going to be Missouri State taking round number one for the search and destroy with absolutely perfect positioning on here i mean they stacked that a site they read it very well and they just played right into the trap that the bearcats had laid so you see cushy going down the last one toxic with a double kill in that round big plays from the bearcats to start this off with first round win yeah and unfortunately iowa you know they did get that guy picked off over there on a bomb pretty quickly as he was going to go solo plant and at that point, once you sit there and get your team clipped off like that, you get or you're just your bomb carrier. Generally, it puts your team in a point of disarray where you're having to run around and you're trying to sit there and recover the bomb as well as get it down. Look at this. Off having to worry about your teams. You got two players hitting the middle of the map. Crayons with a double kill, and they're setting up for art control, going for this B site now. I love this play from the Bearcats. It shows their synergy. It shows their coordination is on point, and Crayons was ready for that to take control of this it is toxic now who is three and oh here gonna find this ray looks for the second one tags him but tags him up but not able to find the kill it was only a matter of time before hoyless goes down three on one here once again yep yeah, we're seeing a lot of three ones here oh and the bearcats once again grabbing that point and you know just showing that overall that, that as i said once again they're they're playing smart they're sitting there getting good rotations down putting iowa in a position where they feel like they're having to panic rather than sitting there and just easily you know in search and destroy you have to sit there and take advantage of that rather than saying you know it's okay we're going to respawn sitting there saying no we have to make the most of this one life that we have and you know sitting there manipulating that to the best as possible putting these guys at a point where they're scared for their lives even though this may just be a game this is a competition overall we have to make sure that we have to utilize the emotion and the you know kind of mental game behind it as much as we do the actual physical and winning these gunfights and you know bearcats doing a great job of doing that already by already getting this bomb down so quickly you saw that Nate Span taking that first K pick right now. Bomb's going to be planted at B4 Iowa, but a trade comes in from Crayons. So it's one for one right now. Three on three. Crayons hitting that flank. Cushy might not be ready for it. Right now, we got to see Disarray washing it. 
the trade does come out for Cushy on the ground, so he did watch that route. He took that kill. Big picks for the Hawkeyes. 24 seconds. Cushy finding another one. Bob's right around the corner. Cushy doing the right thing, and he's going to get out with his life. Now three on one, but we're flipping the tides here. Bearcats absolutely running it back with this here. And Iowa are going to open up with their first round win. Big plays here from Cushy, expecting this flank from Crayons, watching out for the routes, and then just playing his life after finding the second. Yep, doing a great job, you know, setting up in those spots. Unfortunately, but the, you know, Bearcats didn't get the trades there right there that they needed, but regardless, overall, great point by Hawkeye sitting there making sure to get those points, utilizing those trades and getting those call-outs to where the guys can sit there and get those trades from the side or from the back, sit there and make sure and get every little kind of small pick they can to give them those numbers advantage in the long run, you know, putting themselves on the board for the first round right here they got. So I thought I was wondering why the why the name seemed a little bit weird to me. So it was swapped here. So it is Iowa up by two. Missouri State trying to pull this one back now. We're on board with Iowa on defense, playing very passively. Crayons made it in there, but somehow Disarray takes the gunfight to his own hands and finds first blood in favor of the Bearcats. Now, you see a one-for-one one trade. Now, three go down for Hawkeyes. All of a sudden, just Bearcats come alive again in this fourth round. Toxic with the cleanup boost. He's going to get in behind. Makes it a little bit interesting. Bombs down on Spiral. Two players watching it. Toxic has a big, big stance to make here. And he's 6-1. and one. Who else is doing it? Yeah, and he's... Oh, we already see that first kill by him. You know, really stepping up, showing... And it was such a long-range kill that they couldn't even exactly get that trade on him. So I feel like he's going to maneuver around here as best he can. He's got to go for that bomb. Regardless, he's going to know exactly where these guys are set up. Because as we see up there in Laundry, it's so popular. He's going to peek that, and he's going to make sure to keep his eyes on it. As he barely misses a shot right there on the outside... Oh, and as he actually gets the bomb down, we may not have to sleep on Toxic just yet. He's going to keep this game going as it's now on a 1v1 for him. My Hoyle is actually giving up the side two for that plan, so totally allowing this option for Toxic to take it. Looking for Aiden 1. Hoyle is just looking for that positive KD right now. The shoulder peak. He's going to go for it. The slide into each other. One on one through the pillars, and Hoyle is going to take it. For the Bearcats to find their second and tie it up, but very valiant effort from not toxic. A huge play from both teams here, but only one team could take that round. It's going to be a tie here, two to two. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Hoyless didn't sit there and have the exact, you know, right off the bat peaked onto that A site, which he kind of wanted. We saw he was up in laundry, and before he left, he didn't exactly make a peek over. He didn't swing a little bit too wide which all in all you know he is the last man standing at that point he doesn't want to get too dangerous and you know risk it all just for a little bit of information when he can't get that trade out so overall you know allowing these guys to sit there and kind of set themselves up but regardless he made up for it in the uh, in the back end making sure to get that trade out and win the round for the team as we saw toxic doing a great job getting the bomb down regardless another quad hit to the b side opening up with the first blood disarray who had so many five sprees in that hard point. Looking to keep it alive now. The flank coming out for Toxic is good for one. So it's going to leave it for a three on three. Now Bomb gets planted by Iowa. It is Toxic going to go down into Art Cushy. Keeping it even but trades back and forth from either team. Disarray's alive in this. Bob's the last one standing for the Hawkeyes. They are totally just collapsing on this team. Cushy and Disarray. Against Bubs, who has to flank all the way around the site. Pick up Cushy outside of Art. And find the player watching over the bomb. 18 seconds to go. He's going to be spotted. I was going to take this round. They do lead now. 3-2. to two. That was a really strong push by them. And it was held down very well with how they sat there. They had, you know, four split as we saw. They sat there full four on there. We had two go forward, two go back as best as they could. Trying to set themselves up around that site. You know, Bearcats retaliating as best as they can, but regardless, Hawkeyes just having a better setup overall, having a lot more intel, making sure their last two guys standing had the widest field of view, making sure they could sit there and get as much intel as possible into such a situation like that. You know, was... this hit right here from the Bearcats going all the way to the A site. Freeze leading it. Attack this. The, the colors keep on messing me up. So Iowa Freeze 
going to be dropping this bomb. Hoyless White looking to stop it. Bomb goes down, but he's not going to even find it. Crayons with the Overwatch is going to cover his teammate. Find it. Get a one for one trade after that first blood. Disarray coming alive in this round once again, exactly like he did the last time. You have a three on two favoring Iowa here, or favoring the Bearcats here. Make it a two on one now. Crayons up top, watching over this bomb. Cushy has to be aware of this assault rifle who's been just absolutely slaying out all game long. Crayons has a chance to win it out here. Cushy's going to have to go for this defuse. You're going to spot it. You're going to take the shots. And that is another mm. round for Iowa here. Three to three now as they tie it up. Yep. Great job by the guys right there. You know, Iowa holding it down as best as possible. They had that guy. We see this array kind of pushing on the point right here setting up and making sure to get these guys down but regardless and i completely agree with you with these colors they're kind of getting everybody i feel like to an extent even the viewers out <laughs> there but you know overall i think hey, when you're looking at a strategic point of view i think it, rather than looking at the colors we're seeing these little these little figures down in the bottom left and we're looking at where these players are rotating and how they're moving and we're just overall seeing how these players perform in terms of how quick they can get the bomb down, how aggressive they can be, and how they can win these trades. And as we Ooh. see, you know, so many already going down on the B side right here. You saw Disarray trying to do what he did. I mean, he's 7-4 to four right now. Look for that first blood. Wasn't he to take it? Taking up the feet, though. Disarray trying to stay alive. Does go down to talk to in the end of it. But Iowa just trying to stay alive in it. Two and on two. Hoyless with a double kill in this round. For the Bearcats. Gonna mm. find another one now. One on one. Hoyless here. Can he do it again against Toxic? Toxic's gonna win it out this time. So repeat offense right here. And it is gonna be Iowa taking their fourth here. Taking the lead right back. Hoyless had a fantastic effort here. With this double kill mid. But when it came down to it, that trade just wasn't enough for him to take down toxic yeah and that was that was a great that, this specific shot right here i feel like is really what turned the tables getting those wall bangs hoping that those shots land and making sure you can sit there and even out the numbers purely off blind hits those kinds of things are critical you know if you have the ammo for it go ahead and get a couple shots here and there the guys are already going to call out where you are might as well try and get the trade as best as you can follow through with it and if you sit there and miss them, you haven't missed anything out. But if you land it, it's such a huge rewarding experience right there to sit there and give your team the advantage and have those kind of bragging rights from getting a kill that you can't see, but also making the game that much more for your advantage. As Unfortunately, he got traded out there, but regardless, it, 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 a valiant effort overall from these guys. You did see the bomb go down for Iowa. Now they're going to set up for the post plants. Toxic with the first opening as well. So it is going to be an advantage to the bomb planners. Three on two now. They are going to force their way to Toxic's hand. A perfect trade here, but they just don't have the means to take the site. I was good for another one. They're going to be on map point now. Mm hmm. We see Iowa, you know, really sitting there. I feel like they're almost playing with MS, uh, you know, NW, MS, like. Playing with these Bearcats up front, just making sure, you know, letting the guys get in a feel, almost kind of stepping back for a little bit, saying, how do we get, how do we see these guys rotate? How do they play as a team? We need to sit there and write that down. Going forward, we need to talk about it during these intermissions, during these little kind of, um, you know, side switches and making sure that whenever it comes around to the next round, we know how to counter these guys. And I think, you know, that's exactly why right now they're going with a very upfront approach. You know, they know that during Hardpoint they were winning those gunfights and they were sitting there giving these guys a run for their money. So they're going to sit there and stick to that, play very aggressive and make sure to win these trades because they feel, you know, if we don't give them time to think, they can't do it. But if we give them time to think, they're going to outsmart us and they're going to rotate a little bit better. You see the one for one trades is favoring Iowa here as it is going to be three players down. Make it four. Iowa's good for another one. They're going to take map number two, six to three as... It may have been close early on, but Iowa started to pick it up in the end just like that hard point. And as soon as they took hold of this game, they never let go here. Perfect flank from Breeze to put it down, it down in, the in rounds. rounds. That's going to be map number two concluded. The search and destroy to Iowa, the hard point to Iowa. And this is potential sweep positioning for the Iowa Hawkeyes here. Bearcats really in a tough position yeah unfortunately you know we've seen these guys they, they're trying their best they're doing what they can they're thinking they're trying to maneuver themselves as best as they can but 
at that at the end of the day, we just see Iowa just running it right down to him, giving him a good old platter of bullets, making sure as best as possible they can sit there and get those trades rather than sit there and play a thinking game. Because all in all, Cod may be a half and half kind of deal when it comes to mentality and uh, like physical ability. But whenever you sit there and you can dominate with one so much and bring it to the table so quickly, it doesn't allow the other to show. Now, I'm looking at the control here. The control is going to be so difficult. I mean, we talk about, uh, we've talked about this before. And I say it a lot. It's the love child of hard point and search. I mean, yeah. what more could, could you want to, get, to kind of take over that domination form from last year than control making its way back from Black Ops 4? Now, that my whole key is that raid also mixed with this map it's probably the best opportunity for the Bearcats to bring this one back. I mean, Raid itself is the best at, at hand for uh, for the attackers. When it was uh, being as most maps make it defender sided, I think that Raid is probably the best chance that these attackers do have for control. Now, I really want to see Bearcats do what they do best and just slay because we saw it in the hard point. And they were slaying out. Now, if anybody on the viewer side is a little bit um, new, to control itself i mean there's three ways you can win it you can slay out your enemy team because you do have a life life counter it's not unlimited respawns here or you could take control of the a site and b site for the attack and win the round from your objective if not if you're on defense you can try to run the time and win by holding on to a and b or a or b without the attackers taking control of them so there's three different ways you can win this i think a lot of it is going to come down to lives and i think if that's the chance if bearcats can slay out the way that they have been between the s and d and the hard point i think they, they might have a chance here my only problem is that we've been seeing iowa do very like have a lot better team coordination than the bearcats and that's what's really been kind of taking flight into the later rounds of s and d to the later half of hard point this could be spelling trouble for bearcats mm -hmm. and i completely agree with you you know we've seen hawkeyes do very well in terms of rotations in terms of flanks and that's a huge thing in this the bearcats they could be very good up front with points as we saw in checkmate but if they sit there and say if they get point a for example and they have all that space to play with on the other side of the map in terms of you know playing around with b side where they have to capture that then you know hawkeyes if they get a flank somehow We've seen it, and I always compare control to almost like rather the tug of war, more of a push of war. Because if you get more influence on that map, this is the one. Ma this is the one kind of mode to where spawn kills are so easy if you get a lock on these teams. So you know, raid. If you get a one guy going in there, get a flank, get another man to push around through the middle, it's going to be locked down, as we're probably going to see here, or hopefully not. We're going to see all this play out, and hopefully see these guys have a good back and forth and give us a good third map not final map because we're hoping to keep this rolling out we're hoping the bearcats can clutch in a win here and get the momentum rolling the other way so we have a full kind of fledged kind of deal going on tonight in terms of how this game's going to go well the bearcats their series is laying in with this game iowa they have a nice little cushion here with a 2-0 lead now you're talking about spawn kills and usually for that defense you will see a player going rotating across the a site trying to get in behind the streets for that defender side on the garage towards Jim. But right now, a quick four hit for the attackers through the middle of the map. It is going to be a great hold from the Bearcats so far. Disarray stalling out this as best as he can. But a one for one trade may give the hopes up for Iowa to keep this going. Freeze is going to be good for one. Finds a second. Locking down the middle of the map is successful for Freeze, but the rest of the team fall and they're going to take it to the B site. Feel like with that you know once they lock down that mid they sit there we now see that you know those bearcats they have to rotate through the sides or they have to make a halfway push through mid really put them in a weird situation where they're like where do we go they have this locked down we need to find a place to get onto this site especially on this b site they're taking right now and with them also splitting now as we see you know toxic over there on a site they're really kind of confused and in a point of disarray of where to go and not knowing where these players are and that's the thing about attack you had the element of surprise and I iowa doing a really good job of like showing up and holding down disarray and these other guys on the defensive side for all those that are really confused of what just happened i mean if you send enough players to b then when you get wiped on b for the attack you're going to spawn up right on the a site that's exactly what happened to toxic and in the midst of all that crayons hopped down for bedroom got some progression at b as well so it's a little bit easier now with one minute and 45 seconds here and the hawkeyes 
to take this second point. Bob is going to be pushed up into Kitchen. Going to be on a five spree as well, pushing through the spawns. This way, Tiki for Bearcats. Going to find one with the help of his teammate to go down now. Crayons in Kitchen trying to stay alive. Bearcats, they subside this attack and they bring it right back into their control. And another thing we need to mention to keep an eye on throughout the game is, you know, these respawn tickets. These guys are doing a really good job of keeping them super even. So, you know, we got these trays. We don't have just one-way kills going on all game. We got trays going everywhere. As we see, like, 13 and 14, you know, as we saw 15 and 15. Like, these guys are doing really good with all these rotations as well as also making sure to get these kills off simultaneously. We just saw Bubs on a 5 spree. Now Disarray was hopping on a 5 spree for himself. 11 lives to 11 lives. You're locking down this B site successfully so far if you are the Bearcats. But Iowa knocking on that door nonstop. You see Hoyless opting in for one for one trade with Toxic. Keeping it even in the live stance now. Bearcats, they find another. Pussy's trying to get aggressive in the mid. Freeze is going to catch them off. Iowa with a good chance to get some more progression. Take some more space onto this. And Bubs can find this one without Freeze and that nade. They're going to be gaining some more progression. They have to watch out for money now. Disarray doing his best to keep them off of here. But Iowa with some very efficient trades here. They're going to get their second tech of progression. They're going to be locking this down. Only a matter of time here. And Hoyless gets caught out by Crayons, which he is. Ooh. No respawns here for the Bearcats. Really looking like trouble here because Crayons is heating up in the end game. It goes to the progression. The objectives are captured and Iowa takes the first round. Man, that was a really good hold there by Crayons and Bubs right there at the end. You know, Bubs, he sat there, made sure he held up for his team. He said, you know, I got the point right here, but I don't want to let them know I'm here. I don't want a whole team kind of pushing up on me. I don't want to be put in a situation where I got a 1v3. So I I I'll sit right here in the bar. I'll wait for you guys to move up a little bit and we can flood this as a team. And once Crayons came up, those two just took over that site with the storm. They held down that point and made sure to go ahead and get that first round on the board, really showing that these guys are really good at putting the enemy team on their toes when it comes down to holding sights. Well, instead of going for the mid hit, now it's going to be full three with that one lurker to the, the middle of the map on the A site. They're going to have control of it. You're watching Bubs, who's very close to being cleaned up as well. Full three go down for Iowa. Great progression now for the Bearcats. They get this A control. They're going to have plenty of time here. Is this the Bullfrog out for Boosty? It is. Oh, he's got the gunny here with this very, very different gun than we're used to seeing. And he's performing well with the, at the least, you know, compared to the AK-74U, which is like an industry standard right now. Man showing that the meta is always willing to be changed. So let's, let's throw some new kind of curveballs in here. You love to see it with the bullfrog, but now A site's controlled by Bearcats. B site's wide open for the take in two minutes on the time for them to do this. And Disarray hitting a really good flank here to try to pinch out with your team. I love this setup from the Bearcats. And if they can successfully do it, it might be very troubling for the Hawkeyes in this round. You already saw the attacking round be very successful for the Hawkeyes. Now Bearcats trying to do their best rendition of the same thing. Yeah, it's really sitting there. I feel like Bearcats are a little more upfront with their approach, but doing a very good job of like winning these trades and making sure everything, as we see the Hawkeyes have 18 lives compared to the Bearcats, 23. You know, I think they're they're playing the trade game right now. They're not worried about as much as the objective. I'm putting the enemy team on their toes. They're just playing a very upfront approach, and they're saying, you know, let's not let these guys think over here and over there. Let's just, let's just kill them, sit there, put them in a disadvantage where they're stressing about, you know, rather than staying alive than going for the objective. As we see, you know, these guys are held down in the back. Well, the good thing for Hawkeyes there is that they had a player in the bedroom to kind of subside that attack once again. Really have a good split for when the attack did come onto that B side. So you're only giving up a tick of progression, but now you're in the life advantage by three lives. Make it four now as Bubs cleans up a player in the middle of the map. He's going to be traded. And Disarray going to be working alongside Hoyless to bring this on back. But very, very difficult right now for the Bearcats to even touch the B side because of this defense that the Hawkeyes are setting up. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, Hawkeyes didn't exactly see something as the Bearcats utilizing that. As we saw, you know, Iowa was very upfront about their approach. They had guys getting in bars. They had guys getting up close in these encounters. The Bearcats doing a much better job about setting up there in the rear, up in that bedroom, having kind of a, it, oddly enough, a little Hawkeye perspective over everything and making sure that they can kind of get these trades and give a little air support where they can. And Boosty and his bullfrog push through Tiki. He's only gonna able only gonna be able to find one with Disarray's help. 
Two for two trades on either side. You only have 30 seconds left. Six lives to seven lives in favor of Iowa. Make it a tie now, mm. as it is going to be Cushy touching down on the point. He has to be worried about Toxic, though. He's all the way down pool, bottom pool. He's going to clean that one up, take him down off the site. Now, no response for Iowa. No response for the Bearcats either, it looks like. So, four lives for each team. You're only down to two now. Boosty with his Bullfrog and a nice double kill. Cushy's going to help him out. You're one on one now with six seconds left. You have to touch onto the site. Your Hoyless Bob's going to have the better oh, positioning. No. Now, guys are going to take it with the kills for the second round on defense with phenomenal positioning to push the lanes, to set up their defense, and to make sure that it was so difficult for the likes of the Bearcats to even step foot on the B side. Now, that was as close as you could ask. It came down to, like, what was it, four seconds mm -hmm. alongside live. So, very back and forth between both of these teams. When it came down to it, you're really looking at the way that the Hawkeyes were pushing those lanes, getting yep. into sneaky positions, and finding two kills on every push. Yeah, and especially what we saw out of Toxic right there at the end making that push under, you know, bedroom, trying to make sure, hey, you know, I know a guy's going to be up there. They've been utilizing that point all game and all during this round. So if I make a push over there and I see the same exact thing he's saying, but from a ground perspective, I'm on the, uh, our team holds the objective. We have the perspective from the back end to sit there and help each other out. So let me go and make this push, put ourselves in a good position and make sure that whenever it comes down to, uh, you know, when the going gets rough, I can just step up and also put the guy that's up there in that bedroom in a weird position where they don't have the air support anymore. And now those are good pushes that all these guys are kind of maintaining. These teams are out for blood on each other. I mean, I yeah. don't think I've ever seen a control with as many deaths for both sides. I mean, this is insane from both squads that they're able to go pound for pound. I mean, Bob's the only player below double digits with eight kills in his own. You did see an a or mid hit from the Hawkeyes, which was shut down very phenomenally by the Bullfrog of Boosty. Now, you're going for B control if you are toxic, but at Bearcats, they're getting all around the map. They're leeching in the backside. You look at number eight, Boosty, he's just in their heads, rent free in the back of the map, doing damage with this Bullfrog. And Boosty, you know, uh, um, I think it was, it was also Boosty, yeah, earlier who had the Bullfrog. It's so interesting to see this guy, you know, run something so unique, but also perform well with it. Because it sits there and opens the eyes of other players. Now, unluckily, you know, it, he doesn't win, like, uh, every trade, you know, really showing that it's the best weapon in the game. But overall, showing that, you know, everything is still kind of up for debate. You know, if you feel comfortable with a gun, you don't have to run the 74. You, you don't have to run the XM4 or the Krig. You know, just do what you like, you know, feel comfortable feeling your element. Because overall, as I said, you know, if you want to play that mental game, you want to feel like you're at home. You want to feel in your own shoes while you're doing it. It allows you to think a lot more smoothly. That's A going to be captured by Hawkeyes. Pushing the spawns of the Bearcats now. Good opportunity with a minute left to take this attack. But you are going to be down in the lives. And the time's not really favoring you for, for playing slow. So you have to do this efficiently and quickly. But a good job from the Bearcats. Disarray and Boosty to shut down this flank. For shut down any positioning that Hawkeyes did have in the mm. back of the map through the A site. It is going to take their sights to pool where Cushy, the first line of defense. Player in bedroom. Player right to his right. Who's going to push out first? Boosty doesn't even let them get down to Cushy. It is going to be trades one for one. Cushy biding his time, not even letting them know. And in the midst of it, look, there's a flank kind of generating from Hawkeyes yep. once again. And at this point in the game, you kind of have to find those. All those guys were in a standstill right there on mid and over there on the B site. That you had to find a guy at some point saying, we can't stand still. We need to make a push somewhere. And, you know, Buzz is going for that, unfortunately. And, or no, it was actually Toxic, their usual guy for that kind of deal. And once he got around, he didn't win it that first time, but we see him making a really solid attempt here on the second time, holding it down, giving these guys already what possibly could look like a first hit. Well, this is a very good chance now for a lot of progression to Iowa. Two players on the site. Boosie's going to push on through for a two with Disarray's help in behind them. They're going to clear the B site. Four seconds left. Nobody's going to touch. The Bearcats, looks like they're going to take their first round here, Mick. And it nope. was looking good on the back of Boosty with this bullfrog absolutely tearing up the back spawns <laughs> of Iowa. Yeah, these guys held down those positions really well. We saw them, you know, making these call-outs. It almost felt like they knew exactly where everybody was before they even started fighting them. These guys 
sat there and made to look out for these flanks. You know, Toxic always going to be the man for these flanks, doing a really good job with those, giving the enemy team a run for their money in terms of, you know, kind of getting in their heads and figuring out where he's going to be next because he's always a threat to look at. But overall, Bearcats just having a really good attempt and, and a really good shutdown on these points. Sadly, not getting A right off the bat, but, you know, it could be part of the bigger picture for these guys. If they set it down, they only have one thing to look at. And if that's B site, we see that they can they can manage it. Yeah, we're going for another A hit here from the rest of Bullfrogs. Three go down for them. Make it four as Bubs and Freeze lock down the A side of the map. Now, just to give the opportunity for Freeze to push the spawns, do exactly what the bullfrog of boosty was doing last round and that's exactly what bubs is going to be working along with freeze to do another four go down for bearcats absolutely pandemonium right now from the hawkeyes they're just looking to put bearcats in the dirt here and they're doing it very well yep and i think you know toxic i, I i've been talking about this man all night i feel like he's doing such a good job he's always giving these guys a run for their money pushing up on them well, and always kind of giving the player cats a wonder of where he's going to be next. Is it going to be coming up front, charging me with that 74U, or is he going to be making a flank with the XM4, trying to sit there and put us in these shoes where we don't know where he's going to be? And he's always a wild card, and I think players like that are really stand out because oh, whether you know it or not, you are in, you are putting a whole team in a point of disarray where they have no clue what's going on. They don't know how to counter you. And those are super strong players. 15 seconds left. You had a five spree for Toxic right now. Freeze on the brink of one of his own. He's got streaks as well. The artillery barrage raining hell. Down over on the B side of the map. Tox is going to clue in for another one. You only got five seconds left. I was going to take the sweep for tonight. As the time is going to be where it's at for the Hawkeyes. And they are going to take this control three to one here, Mick. With absolute... Dominance in the end of that round. I mean, you saw Bubs hit a 7 spree. Freeze locking down Spiral with a 4 kill AK of himself. Getting streaks to help out Toxic on the other side of the map. Who is on a 5 spree. So everybody yep. was slaying out here for Hawkeyes in round number 4. Absolutely insane from Iowa yep. for this map. And I, I, I just... I don't know what clicked into them. It was just something changed in their minds after the Bearcats shut down that attack, and they were out for blood in that round four. And it's really unfortunate, as we see. You know, every as we can look at the lineup along the top, we see that Iowa hasn't, like, shut them down by any means in terms of, like, every single map. They've always let some points slide here and there, letting the teams, you know, letting those Bearcats actually get around on the board or getting a solid amount of points somewhere every here and there and letting players stand out. But regardless, they just, it almost feels like part of a bigger scheme where they're letting these guys show and they're like, what do we need to do? Who do we need to target? How do we need to play this? Let's regroup it and let's send Toxic after them because that man, he's got it. We're not going to be able to see Garrison or Miami for the, the end of this game because Iowa decided to sweep it in three and they looked phenomenal doing it as well. I mean, you can't give up against the Bearcats, though. I mean, that hard point, 250 to 194, and then a 6-3 surge that was only in Iowa's favor after a 3-3 split at the half. I mean, absolutely insane from the likes of Iowa in the slang presence that they were able to bring between Toxic and Crayons. It, it was it was just insane from, from the two of them. The help out in the, at the end game from Freeze and Bubs as well for that control just insane from this team can't stress it enough i loved what i'm seeing and honestly for the for the rest of the series i can't wait to see what the rest of the teams have to bring as well because coming up very shortly it is going to be oklahoma the university of oklahoma versus oklahoma state university which is literally a battle of blood right yeah. from their own home state i i cannot wait to see what comes out from that and it is going to be cruz and keg who cast it. So, I mean, Mick, how are you feeling about this match between Iowa and Bearcats? Really excited. You know, uh, it's it's it, just showing what each team has put on the field and or in the game. Therefore, the, it's just nice to see that where everybody's kind of ironing out. We even see some little wild cards here and there in terms of players and even in what they're using. Well, you know, we saw, you know, Boosie with the, with the bullfrog, maybe we'll oh. see somebody next week run into the KSB, like run into three rounds. It's something crazy. And it, even then, just that alone is just something, just a small things like that add up in the, over the course of the series and allow a lot of little funny moments here and there, but giving highlights none the least.
where we had an absolutely close hard point. A uh, close search and destroy until Iowa decided to wake up and come uh, come alive. And then uh, it just insane seeing that bullfrog come out, along with the shrieks from Freeze at the end of it. You like to see it from these teams. And, uh, insane match number one. Uh, 3-0 does not tell the tale. CCL will be right back for the Bravo stream. So stay tuned as it's going to be Keg and Cruz up next for the battle of Oklahoma.